This video is going to demonstrate how to use annotative text and dimensions in model space and then uh, modify those in paper space so that you can put your dimensions in one spot and have them adapt to however you want the drawing to change. To do so, I have a, a very simple floor plan here of maybe like a garage and workshop or something like that. And then I also have a, uh, a floor plan or excuse me, a, a border and title strip in um, paper space here. I don't have any viewports yet because that's part of the thing I'm going to show you how to make on this. Uh, if I were to go in right now and just uh, show you how I would do dimensioning, um, if we start off and, and look at our dimension styles. You'll notice that I've got a dimension style here called City Blueprint. It's not annotative, okay, but it looks like a dimension style. And if I were to come in here and say put a uh, maybe a linear dimension going from there to there, like maybe an overall dimension. Um, as I zoom up on that, you'll notice that it's a it's a an actual dimension that's the way it should be, except that it's it's much too small to be seen in um, in in the view here. And even if I go to the floor plan or if I go to the border and title strip, if I make a viewport. Um, and then look at that, you know, same thing here. That dimension is just too small to be read. It's, it's really not doing anybody any good. So um, we're going to look at how to place your dimensions in, in model space so that you can see them here and you can also see them in um, paper space when you get there. Now, a couple words about annotative dimensions. Um, it's definitely something you're either going to do annotative dimensions in model space or you're going to do regular dimensions in paper space. You're not going to you're not going to do both. Um, it's it's one or the other for the most part. And you really need to determine uh, which or know what it is your company wants, the company that you work for and stick with it. So if you're working for somebody who does their dimensions in paper space, you just need to do your dimensions in paper space. If you're working for somebody who does their dimensions in model space and uses annotative dimensions, then this is the stuff for you. So we're going to start off by um, creating a new uh, dimension style that's annotative. Okay, so if I come in here to my dimension panel and I go to the little flyout here for my dimension style manager, you'll see I've got a simple one in here, like I said, called City Blueprint. I just called it that because that's the font that I used that goes with the text. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just going to come in here and say, let's create a new dimension style and I'll call it architectural, um, because it's an architectural, uh, blueprint. I'm going to start with city blueprint, um, because I already know that it looks the way I want, but I'm going to make it annotative. So I just check that box right there and choose continue. And then as you see, as I go through here, I could come in and just like always, I could change the sizes of everything. So eighth inch, um, tick marks and extend beyond and baseline spacing, symbols and arrows, my text size. Okay, so now here's the other thing that I need to change. My text size is, uh, it's, it's city blueprint, but if I click on the ellipsis here, I'll notice that city blueprint is not a, uh, an, an annotative text style. So I'm going to go ahead and create a text style as well. Right here I'll say, okay, let's create a new text style. I'll call it architectural as well. And um, I'll go ahead and leave that as city blueprint. But I do want this to be annotative, so I'll click right here where it says annotative. And you'll see that it says, okay, what do you want your paper text height to be? So I'm going to say 1 8 of an inch, 0.125. So notice it says paper text height here. It doesn't say just tight text height. So it knows that it's going to be adjusting based on how we're going to be plotting this. It also puts the little triangular scale there so that it, so that we know that this is an, uh, an annotative text style. So I'll choose apply there and close. And then I'll choose that architectural text style here as well. Now, if I had wanted, uh, if, if I look here on the fit uh, tab, I could have just converted my city blueprint to annotative by clicking that box right there. But I wanted to show you how to go through and create one just in case you wanted to. So at this point, I'm done creating my dimension, my text style. So I'll choose OK. 
And then I'll make sure that this one is actually current and choose close. And so now I'm ready to come in here and place in some linear dimensions. So if I come in here, for example, and I say, okay, let's place in a linear dimension. As soon as I click, uh, it, and, and it usually does the first time you say you want to place an annotative dimension, it's going to ask you, uh, you're creating an annotative object, set the annotation scale to the scale at which the annotation is intended to display. So I got to think ahead a little bit, um, and I'm going to display this at, an, at a size of um, a quarter of an inch is equal to a foot, which is a standard architectural scale. So I'll drop this down. I'll find that one quarter of an inch is equal to a foot. Click there, choose OK. And now when I come in to place my dimension, I'll click here, I'll click here. And unlike what we saw before, now I'm getting a dimension that is displaying as it as if it were a, uh, a dimension that's proper. Okay, now if I were to actually measure this text, okay, if I come in here, for example, and I say, uh, let's just do a measure command, and I say, how tall is this text from there to there? You'll see that it's like six inches tall. Um, but what it's doing is it's saying, okay, you're going to plot this at a quarter of an inch is equal to a foot. So a quarter of an inch is equal to a foot. That means six inches is equal to, um, half of a foot okay so you know or uh, excuse me an eighth of an inch is equal to six inches so if we wanted our text to be an eighth of an inch tall then it's going to be six inches here so it does all of the calculations for you based on you know what you wanted to do now this is a uh, it's a it's a dimension just like anything else okay if i were to come in here and change the size or the location of it you know it's going to completely update if I come in and I add another one, you know, say here like this, you know, it's still going to work exactly the same way that it would have before. Okay, so I can come in and say, you know, I can dimension this <clears throat> as if it were a, a regular, you know, architectural dimension. Let me change the spacing here a little bit just to give it a little bit more space. So I can say, okay, let's put one there and I'll line it up with that. And then we can continue, <clears throat> um, you know, to the center of this one and the center of that one and, and whatever it happens to be. So you, you get the idea here that you can very easily now come in and put in your dimensions, you know, and, and have them completely update um, the way you normally would. Now, if I hover over each of these dimensions, you'll notice that it's got that little triangle badge above the cursor there, the little crosshairs. So that's just to let you know that it's an annotative dimension. Okay. Um, now, if I were to be done with that, and let's say I wanted to put some text in here as well. Okay. Uh, so then I would go to my, my text editor here, and I could use either multi-line text or single line text. Notice that my architectural text style is already the one that's current. It's got the little triangle there as well so that it is annotative, okay? So if I say, if I wanted to put in here, you know, like garage and then workshop, I could come in and say, okay, let's create our, um, our, our frame for our text. And I'll do like a center, uh, middle center justification on this. <clears throat> and I want it to say, this will say garage, for example. Okay, and then um, notice that it knows also, okay, because I want to display at a quarter of an inch is equal to a foot, that that's the size that the text should be, okay. And if I wanted this to say workshop, I could do the same thing here. I could come in and click on those. I'll set this to middle center justification. This maybe says workshop. Okay, workshop and then click outside the box. So I've got some text here that's automatically, you know, going to update based on my size that I tell it that I want to, you know, plot to. Now, if I click on this, <clears throat> let's say that I might also want to do it at, uh, let's say three sixteenths of an inch is equal to a foot. If I click there, okay, notice that these didn't change size, all right? Because it doesn't know that, you know, it, it thinks that I want these to be uh, an eighth of an inch. 
So if I want these also to be displayed at either a quarter of an inch, okay, which a quarter of an inch is equal to a foot, or three sixteenths of an inch is equal to a foot, I need to add that ability here to these. And the easiest way to do that is just to select the dimensions that you want to add that flexibility to, then use the Change Properties dialog box, okay, and you'll see here that on the, you know, it says I've got dimensions, there's you know, seven of them or whatever here that are being applied. Um, it says that the annotative scale is a quarter of an inch is equal to a foot. But if I also want them to be displayed at 3 16th, I need to add that in. So I can do that, just click right here, and you'll see that we get this little box right here on the right hand side. Now if I just wanted to change them, I could just change them. But what I can do is, is I can say, hey, let's add an additional scale here. And so when I choose add, I can choose my 3 16th. <clears throat> here it is, 3 16th. Okay. So now my, my scales or these dimensions will have the option of being seen at a quarter of an inch is equal to a foot or 3 16th of an inch is equal to a foot. So I'll say okay on that. And now notice that, <clears throat> um, that these all look a little bit bigger now. And it's because if this drawing was smaller, you know, 3 16ths of an inch is equal to a foot, but my text needs to be an eighth of an inch tall, it's going to be a little bit bigger. So again, as I switch back and forth now between a quarter of an inch and 3 16ths of an inch, you'll see how it updates those, okay? The other thing that happens is if I hover over this, notice now that I've got two badges instead of just one, the little triangle badge by the crosshairs there. So that's saying, hey, there's multiple scales that this thing could be displayed at, okay? And if I click on it, you'll see that it shows me both of them at the same time. So the, the bigger text is the 3 16 the smaller text is the quarter inch, okay? We can do the same thing with this text because if I you know, have this displayed at uh, a quarter of an inch, it's gonna be fine, but it's not gonna display at 3 16 and I'm not going to do that just yet because I want to demonstrate how this works over in paper space. So um, <clears throat> what I'll do now is I'll go over to paper space and I'm going to create a couple of viewports. Uh, the first one I'm going to create, um, I'm just going to use the mView command. Okay. And I'll say I want to start from there and I want it to go to there. Um, I forgot to put this on the viewport layer, so let me fix that real quick. It's going on the viewports layer. Okay, so now notice that um, the text isn't showing up here, but that's okay. If I double click inside of here, and I want that, let's say that this one I want to be at a quarter of an inch is equal to a foot. I just simply double, uh, open this up and I choose my quarter of an inch is equal to a foot, and now it updates these dimensions so that it, that they display at a quarter of an inch is equal to a foot and then my text is also displayed at a quarter of an inch is equal to a foot. If I change this on this one so that we have 3 sixteenths, okay, notice now that my dimensions updated so that now my text is still an eighth of an inch tall but my dimensions did not update, or actually my text didn't update because it doesn't have that ability. I didn't tell it that I want that to be able to display at 3 16 of an inch is equal to a foot. So the point here is, is if you want some dimensions to be displayed in one viewport, but not in another viewport, then you'll make those dimensions have only the scale factor that you want them to display in that viewport and none others. Okay. So if I wanted that those dimensions to display in this viewport as well, what I would do is go back to model space here, select my two pieces of text, use the change properties dialog box to do the same thing. Come in here and say, okay, my annotative scale is a quarter of an inch is equal to a foot, but I also want to have them display at 3 16 of an inch is equal to a foot. So I'll pick 3 16 and add that to the list and say, okay. So now, you know, depending on what they are here or what they are here, they'll show up. Okay, so I'm gonna lock this viewport here. Then I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna create one additional viewport here. I'm gonna start off with a polyline. So let me go in here and change my viewports. So I'm gonna create a, poly a polygonal uh, uh, viewport, so just so that I can get these nice curved edges here. And I don't 
you know, go outside of my border. Oops. And then, oops, no, 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 don't do that. Polyline from there to there to there. Now I need to edit these. So polyline edit, and I'm going to join it with this one. So it's all one object. So now using my make view command, so I'm making my viewport. I'm going to use an object, and my object is going to be that polyline that I created, right? Um, so now I've created that polyline or that viewport. And this one, okay, if I jump in here, I can display it at a quarter of an inch is equal to a foot. Okay, so now I've got the same information placed in two different dimensions or do two different viewports, um, but the, you know, the, the, the dimensions are, the dimensions are still the right size. The, the text is an eighth of an inch tall here. The, uh, the hash marks are an eighth of an inch long. The extension passed is an eighth of an inch. Okay, same thing here. The text is an eighth of an inch. Um, so I was able to, you know, display that information in multiple viewports based on, um, you know, what I want it to be. So now one last thing we'll do here is I'll create a multi-leader style, okay, the same way. So I'll say I want a new multi-leader style. We'll call this one architectural as well. Mm, architectural. Okay. Um, so we want our content here. It's going to be multi uh, M text. I want this to use our architectural style here. Uh, middle of the top, middle of the top. That's all good there. Leader structure. Um, everything is good here. We want to make this annotative. Okay, so we're going to check that box so that it's always annotative here. Leader format all looks good, so we'll say okay there. And so now I can take this one, I can set it current. Okay, close. And I'm going to go to the text layer and I'll go back in here and, and we'll put some information on. So. So now if I wanted to add some information in here, I could do this. Uh, using my multi-leader command, I could come in and I could add in a multi-leader, for example, that maybe says, you know, like roll up garage door. Okay. Um, and just for fun, we'll put another one in here um, that, you know, we'll, we'll put one in here and it says something like, you know, how about like, uh, 220 volt power for whatever you need it okay it's not not super critical as far as what we're doing here just just the fact that I you know do this so again this is based on a 3 16 of an inch is equal to a foot this text is going to be displaying at that size right um, but this text is only showing here at 3 16 okay same thing that so if i want this to show at any other scale i need to select those um, use my change properties dialog box and come in and said okay i want those also to be annotative scale not just 3 16 of an inch is equal to a foot but also a quarter of an inch is equal to a foot okay so we can say okay there and now in here in, in papers or in model space, if I switch, you know, everything updates. If I switch and if I switch over here in paper space, it updates as well. Notice that the text is the right size here. It's the same size in both places, eighth of an inch, even though this view is smaller. Now, one last thing that's kind of cool about annotative dimensions and text and stuff is if I were to adjust something in one of these views, it doesn't, it's not going to affect it here, which is counterintuitive. Okay. So if for some reason I wanted this text to be outside of here, maybe not inside of here, I can jump in here. I can pick this text. And when I stretch it here like this, um, notice that before I click out of it, it's got my three sixteenths one up here, but my quarter inch one down here. So, now when I jump out, it left the smaller one down here inside that's going to be over here in that one. So I can adjust the, the placement of these based on um, 
you know, where I want it to go. And if I change it in one viewport, it's not going to change it in the other viewport. So just kind of a nice little feature that they've got in there for us so that, you know, if you get too cramped on dimensions, for example, if, if these got too cramped, I could change them here, but then they would still display properly over here. So just something to be aware of on how that works. So uh, the last thing that I would want to do is I want to make sure that both of my viewports are locked. Okay, you always want to keep your viewports locked and I'd probably want to freeze that viewport layer uh, so that it doesn't affect, you know, my, my drawing and that kind of thing. So then I've got my two scales. If I wanted um, to add the, the scale here, I could do that, you know, just using a field. And that way I could say this is the floor plan with at a quarter of an inch is equal to a foot. And this is the floor plan with the, um, with the scale at three sixteenths of an inch is equal to a foot. But I'm not going to do that now. Uh, you guys have seen enough. And if you... Uh, if you have any questions, you know how to get a hold of me.